about it was that no one had really ever considered it from the point of view of the policeman. And I just imagine the moment when this policeman, having thought that three years earlier, had got this chap banged to rights, you know, done and dusted, really simple, was called to number 10 Rillington Place and told, we've found three bodies. I mean, what must that moment have been like? You know, in terms of, you know, smack yourself in the head moments, that really does take the biscuit. Um, and Stratton, of course, is, is rather different from the, the policeman who actually did this, who, a couple of whose notebooks got strangely lost before the Braben report. I mean, I'm not sure if they had rules then about you are supposed to keep things for X time, but a couple of notebooks had actually disappeared mm. before 1961. Um, and I really, I wanted to look at it like that, because my policeman, Stratton, He's, he's a good person. I don't mean good in the sense of rigidly moral, but he's good in that he, he's a kind, thoughtful person. And yet he was absolutely sure, you know, Evans, who in the book I call Davis, is guilty. And, that, and that's that. And then, of course, looking back, he, see, he sees all the reasons why Davis may have lied and may have been guilty. But also Stratton likes Davis, which was something that was true of Evans. That everyone liked him. That, that's on record that the policemen liked him. That they, they were fond of him. Uh, and I also, as I said, I feel this case has been with me my whole life. Because not only did I go to school round the corner from where Tem Rillington Place was, because like Cromwell Street, where Fred West murdered all those women, um, Tem Rillington Place and the whole street was torn down. And it was, it was a slum property anyway, but it had to be because of the psychogeography of the area. Um, and I, le I learned about Christie sort of at my mother's knee. I think people who are going to become crime writers, you know, like other kids have My Little Pony. Well, we sort of had my first serial killer and, and Christie was mine. Um, and I remember quite clearly the conversation with my mother. She was giving me a lift into school one day. And we'd been doing the Egyptians. And I, so I was asking her about mummification. My mother's a doctor. And she told me about it. And then she said, you know, some people get mummified by accident sometimes. And I, what do you mean? How do you mummify somebody by accident? And she said that when she was training at St. Andrews to be a doctor, she'd done a forensic science course and one of the cases they'd studied because at the time it was two years old that case was Christy and she told me all about how these women had been found in this airtight alcove and therefore preserved I didn't actually remember forensic details it didn't interest me why Christy who may or may not have been a necrophile did it didn't interest me I was about nine bad people do bad things but what did interest me was that Evans had kept saying, I didn't do it, Christie did it, Christie did it, over and over again, and no one believed him. And Evans' mind was about equivalent of a 12-year-old. And it just happened that the previous year at school, I had been accused of, by a very ferocious headmistress, really scary dragon lady, of doing something I hadn't done. And I remembered this, and I thought, well, I, that just ruined the whole term for me. And it was a small thing, but what would it be like if your life was at stake? And so it was, even though I was not alive when any of this happened, it was very real to me. Um, and the Notting Hill location, of course, I moved to Euston to be on Stratton's patch, because that made it easier. I couldn't sort of think of a way where he might be seconded to Notting Hill, that it would have been too much business and bother and yeah. for not very good, you know, end result, really. Um, and I thought, well, Euston, Notting Hill Gate, they were all much of a muchness then. I mean, Britain hadn't recovered from the war by the early 50s. Peeling paint, even if you could afford to repair something, there were no materials. It all had to go for new housing. And the whole place was dismal.
you know, rationing was still in force. It was tough. You know, people were st still sort of saying, well, who won anyway? You know. And it's very much, it's an austerity murder. Yeah. It epitomizes that era.